If you click in this video, you're like me and millions of people around the world and you often struggle with sleep. I have read hundreds of scientific papers, read a lot of books and watch every video about sleep optimization. In this video, I will provide 46 tips in four different areas that have helped me and many people optimize their sleep quality. 90% of people do not know all of these tips. And because of that, they're still experiencing sleep problems. This is a full guide with 46 tips. My recommendations is that you apply all of them to start sleeping well tonight. I have also created a checklist document that you can download for free and you can find in the description below. And as always, I'm very respectful of your, of your time, so please find time times also in the description below. So let's start. The only formula you need to know is that space times time equal good sleep. So first, let's optimize our space. Number one, check for allergy triggers. Before you check what is wrong with you, check what is wrong in your own space. Start with deeply cleaning your room. From mold growing in the wall, dust below your bed or dirty sheets that can impact your respiratory system and diminish your sleep. It could be your porn is cheap perfume, a cream they're using, maybe it's even snowball that like had, or this exotic new plant you got from Uganda. Some of this stuff might be causing you a small or hidden allergy, which is preventing you from sleeping to your best capacity. Number two, stop being a penny pincher with your mattress. If you can spend $2,000 in a one week vacation in Spain, you could spend the same $2,000 in a very good mattress, which you're gonna be sleeping every day of your life. Low cost materials can cause you breathing problems attract dust and a bad design may be hurting your back and your whole body. Number three, Wi-Fi is bad. A conspiracy theory proven true. Electromagnetic radiation emitted by mobile phones do impact sleep quality. There's a growing scientific evidence plus thousands of people reporting this for years, which link your Wi-Fi and smartphones with poor sleep quality. Personally, and this is my own personal opinion. If I put my cell phone outside of my room and I turn off Wi-Fi and everything, I sleep better. Maybe it's placebo, maybe something else, but I know some other people that do it and they also feel better. The more away you are from all these electronics, the better your sleep quality is. Maybe you just give it a try. It's an easy solution. Number four, silent neighbors. You may not notice, but early bird neighbors Real early birds may be waking you up before you actually want to. You may fall asleep right away, but this might have ruined your sleep deep cycle. This way you don't wake up as refreshed as you want. As a solution, try getting earplugs. There are very good quality earplugs and I'm showing you one right now, which I have no um, monetary connection, but I really like it. And you can find any brand or anything similar in your local store. And I think it's a very good investment because there are tiny things that are happening, especially if you live in the city, that are waking you up constantly. And if you live in an apartment building, there might be people taking their kids very early, taking the dog or maybe your roommate, your, your family or your partner, or if you have kids yourself, they are waking you up earlier than before you want. So just give it a try. Number five, cool is better. Our bodies evolve with environment. Night, it's the biggest sleep trigger. And there are two things that happen at night. It gets dark and it gets colder. And whenever you want to go to sleep, you want to recreate the closest night environment. Make it dark and make it cold. Number six, turn off the lights. Following the last tip, you know your room should be dark. But the same thing is that the first thing you do in the morning is to get the light of the sun. The closer we are to living as our natural environment, which is outside, the better we'll be able to sleep. So very early in the morning, get some sunlight, and at night, get dark. That also means that you should try to get away from all the electronics with big light emission, so you can sleep better. The longer or the more hours before you go to sleep that you stay away from them, the better and the easier it will be for you to fall asleep. The reality is that for some reason, a lot of tools and machines have this useless red light that when you turn it off, they're still on, so it's super annoying. 
Maybe consider getting some tape, some black tape and cover them so you don't see this because at least for me this is super annoying. Or maybe even consider getting a sleep mask. Number seven, get sunlight. And now I'm repeating myself and I just said it in the last two tips, but it's so important. The first thing you should do in the morning, go outside and get some sunlight to your eyes directly. A few minutes, just, you know, don't get in your car right away and then go to your office and never see the sunlight. Be outside, get some sun in your body for a few minutes. It won't kill you. Believe me, this is what made Andrew Huberman super famous. He said, people, get outside, get sunlight and you will improve your sleep quality. And he actually does. So that's why he's so famous. So just follow him, follow his tips, follow what I'm saying and it will help you fall asleep. And something that's really important, it's not only in the morning, but also in the midday and before the sun just co goes completely down, get some sun because your body will kind of track the time of the day depending on how much sun you're getting. This is, this is kind of actually important. So you get in the morning, maybe at midday, you get a pause, a pause break, get some sun and before you leave work, there's still some sun outside. Go outside and get some sun in your body. Believe me, it will help you. Number eight, sleep quantity. The first thing that our bodies are evolutionary and biologically designed to sleep. Sleep is by far the best health, mental and mood boost performance that exists. For most people, seven hours is the minimum requirement. But for me, I have found out that when I sleep nine hours, that is the optimal amount and I feel great. Also performing at my highest potential. Number nine, sleep latency we often forget that we need between 10 to maybe 30 minutes or sometimes even more to fall asleep so you need to take this number in consideration for the amount of time that you want to sleep so if you want to sleep eight hours calculate eight and a half hours that you will need to sleep this amount of time per night this 30 or 40 minutes extra of sleep will have a lot of benefits of how refreshed you feel the next day. So they're very important. Number 10, all nighters are for losers. Better to go to sleep early and wake up early than doing the opposite. Temperature rise in the morning and the sun starts to shine. It gets incredibly harder to sleep longer as the day progress, yet it's easier to go to bed earlier. Number 11, regular bedtime routine. It is easier to go to sleep at the same time every day. And no, that's not possible with the social life, but at the same time, it is possible. And the, only, and the way you can shift it is by shifting your social life earlier and earlier so it adapts your sleep schedule. Maybe you start finding a way that instead of going for a fancy dinner at night, it's better to go for a fancy breakfast in the morning. And maybe your life will just be better like that. The only valid excuse to go to sleep later is if you have kids. And even with that, you can adapt your kids to go to sleep earlier. And they should not get in the way of your health because they also should learn good sleep habits. Number 12, alarms are for the evening. Alarms should be used to tell you when you should go to sleep and not to wake you up. If you want to go to sleep at 10, put an, put an alarm at 8.30 so you know, okay, from this time on, I'm gonna stop everything I'm doing, I'm gonna start relaxing, and I'm gonna go to sleep early. The next section is about physiology. Your physical health may be affecting your sleep quality. There's so many aspects that you will think are unrelated, but they actually have a big impact. I will first talk about sleep blockers, which are things you consume or do, and then some great tips of how you can improve your physical health that will improve your sleep quality. The first sleep blocker is number 13, reduce caffeine. The biggest problem with caffeine is that even if you can fall asleep early enough, you still have a lot of caffeine in your body. It will affect how deep you can go in your sleep and you will not feel as refreshed. That's why even if you sleep nine hours after drinking a lot of coffee the day before, the next day you will still feel tired and you will want to take another cup of coffee and it's because you're not sleeping deep enough to feel completely recover. The reality, and this I can tell by my experience and many people that I have talked about it, once you drop caffeine and you reduce caffeine a lot and you start sleeping enough and properly, you don't feel the need of caffeine the next day. 
your body and your brain start working properly without caffeine. Caffeine can be good, but use it appropriately and don't use it every day. Number 14, avoid or quit alcohol. Let's put it like that. Most of us experience it. We wake up on a Saturday or maybe on a Sunday at 1 p.m. after eight hours of sleep because you went to a big party that you came back home maybe 2, 3 a.m. in the morning. And you say, okay, yeah, it doesn't matter if I sleep eight hours afterwards, I should still feel refreshed. The reality is not true. Usually, even if you wake up at 12, your day is still super bad. It will still be super, you will still feel super tired and it's just really bad. And it's because alcohol, the only effect you the day and affect you the day after, which is quite obvious, it affects your sleep quality in general. So if you wanna go out so late, you will affect your sleep quality no matter what. But adding alcohol in the equation just make it worse because alcohol prevents your body to go deep in the sleep cycle. It, it reduces the amount of deep sleep you have. Even with one drink, you will still experience some reduce in the sleep quality. This idea that alcohol can help you sleep faster might be true, but you sleep faster, but then the quality of sleep is worse. Remember, sedation is not sleep. Number 15, cannabis. There's a mixed evidence about cannabis being good or bad for sleep quality, depending on the dose and the strain. My general advice is that if you are using cannabis to fall asleep, there might be another bigger problem that you are trying to hide with this. And for some people, cannabis does not mean a better quality of sleep. It might be help you to fall asleep faster, but it doesn't mean that you will have a better quality of sleep. If you're consuming that for sleeping, you might want to find another solution because this is not the best option for you. Number 16, medications. This is one of the big sleep blockers. There are thousands of medications. You might be taking one right now and it might be working for what it was intended. But for many medications, if you read the fine print, they could say that it could affect your sleep quality. So you might be getting the results you want for something else, but then it's affecting your sleep in general. Is that the case? My suggestion is go and check online the literature about each medication. And if you find an association of this medication and sleep problems, talk to your doctor. Maybe there are another alternatives for the specific medication that might not affect your sleep quality, or there might be ways to optimize it in a way that you can sleep better. But it's better to be informed. So take your time and do your research properly. Number 17, chemical pollutants. There might not be much that you can do about it, but air pollution affects people, sleep quality and health in general. And if you're living in a big city that is very polluted and you have no other options, okay. But if there are other options in your life and you're evaluating about what is more important and what are the alternatives that you could do for you and your family and everyone surrounding you, consider moving to a place that is less polluted because it will improve your sleep quality. For the next tip is about fixing a common problem that affects a lot of people while sleeping, which is snoring or sleep apnea. You need to take your sleep apnea seriously. Sleep apnea is a common condition in which your breathing stops and restarts many times while you sleep. This can prevent your body from getting enough oxygen and affects your sleep duration and quality. Evaluate if you snore by asking your partner or a friend, and if you have none of them, record yourself at night to see if you are snoring. If you do snore, it could be a sign of sleep apnea. There are different causes of sleep apnea, and some could be even be structural from your body that may require surgery. There are different causes and reasons for sleep apnea. And the best thing it could be is that you get evaluated by a specialist. This is the best solution, the best suggestion. And there are some problems that might be even structural that will need surgery or a very deep treatment. For this will come tip number 18, which is to lose weight. There's a huge chance that if you're overweight, this could be one of the main causes of your sleep apnea or your snoring. The extra tissue may obstruct the airflow. So drop the cakes, drop the sodas and the sugar and all this junk food, hit the gym, start running, start sleeping good, and you will see improvement in your sleep apnea. Number 19, 
Sleep Kama Sutra. There are more than one position to sleep. Check online, there are actually many videos and information about it, about what are the different ways and what is the best way for sleep. The reality, there is no one that is best for anyone, but what is best for you. And there might be a few tricks with pillows and different things that you can do and exercises to try and insert a certain part of your body that if you learn to sleep this way, it might improve you because of course, if you're in a position that is collapsing your lungs and collapsing your body, it will be harder for sleep. So there are ways that you can sleep better. So do your own research for that. Number 20, CPAP machine. Continuous positive airway pressure therapy is a common treatment for obstructive sleep apnea. A lot of people are reporting that this actually helped them a lot. They're just not sexy to use. And maybe you are, might be ashamed or you're, you think your partner will not like you because you're wearing it, but who cares? If you're sleeping, you have a machine, actually, who cares? If you're sleeping properly and you're not snoring and then your partner can sleep properly, it's actually even more sexy because you will increase your libido when you can sleep properly. So that's also extra point for that. So again, consider going to a sleep expert, whatever you live, that can help you with a CPAP machine if it's appropriate for your specific condition. Number 21, sex. Sleeping with your partner and having intimate fun at night releases oxytocin in your body and reduces cortisol. So that helps you calm yourself. There's a lot of research that shows that when you have intimate fun with your partner, you sleep better. The more you sleep, the more your libido increases and the more you want to sleep together with your partner. So it's a cycle. Also, when you're not sleeping properly, your face doesn't look good, your libido is down, so you don't wanna sleep with someone else, and they also don't wanna sleep with you. So, if you want my dating tip today, the more you sleep, the more the people wanna sleep with you. Number 22, avoid late exercise. Okay, this might be counterintuitive with the last tip, but if you do very strenuous and very hard exercise late at night, it's not the same as sleeping with your partner, it might be that it's just you're raising your heart rate, you're increasing cortisol, you just making your body very active and very awake, and this will make it harder for you to fall asleep. So better, if you need to do exercises, plan that for the morning. Like at night, the only exercise you should do is intimate fun, and that's it. Everything else, try to put the barrel in the morning so you can sleep better. Number 23, avoid late dinners. Main two recommendation, is not to eat three hours before bed. And I know there is anyone from Spain, Italy, Argentina, but they like to eat at what, 9, 10 p.m. And then, I don't know, if they go to sleep after that, this is not a good thing to do. And they claim that it's the best for them, that if they don't eat, they cannot fall asleep. But in the rest of the world, if you sleep late, you have problems to sleep. And at least for me, if I eat anything three hours before bed, I feel full. And this might be your meat. For other people, it might be even easier. Or some people need to, they fall asleep better when they eat. I don't think that's the case. The scientific literature I've checked, it says that it's better to avoid eating close to bed. Also because it might cause you to wake up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. But at the end, experiment yourself what's better for you. But this is just my recommendation and what I do and what works for me. Number 24. Decrease nocturia. There's actually a word for that, nocturia. Nocturia is defined as the need for patients to get up at night on a regular basis to urinate. If you didn't know about it, there's a word for that. And this is very straightforward. If you drink a lot of liquids before going to bed, the higher the chance that you will wake up in the middle of the night to go to pee. This is the same as you get older, there increases the chances because your body can hold the liquids for less time. So my recommendation is also drink a lot of water early in the morning, feel hydrated, and the closer you get at night, try to avoid fluids at least maybe two hours before bed. And also just, just before you go into bed, go to the bathroom so you avoid trying to wake up in the middle of the night. Something that is not so obvious, but if you think about it, it might make sense. If you use a lot of tight pants, you usually, if you drink a lot, you want to open because you feel that it's pushing your bladder. The same it could be your pyjama. Some people use this very tight pyjama. I don't know why, but this could be pushing your bladder. So this might cause you to want to even to go to, to pee earlier than you should. So consider using loose clothes, or if you can, just sleep naked. And maybe this will decrease 
the urge to go to the bathroom if you had drinks the night before. Number 25, sleep bruxism. A condition where you will unconsciously grind or clench your teeth at night. This not only could damage your teeth, but it may affect your sleep. You may not know that this is happening to you, but if you go to your dentist, you should definitely do it at least once or twice a year, they could see if your teeth have a, lot, a little bit of wear and tear, and they could recommend different things to avoid that, because this might affect even in a small amount your sleep quality. And also, you'll have a better smile. Everyone wants that. Number 26, naps. If there's someone watching me from Spain or from Italy, naps are very important and they're overall good. The thing is that naps are not for everyone and not at any time of the day. There are some people that can take naps, they do half an hour naps, one hour naps, and then they feel great and they can continue with their life and they fall asleep at night perfectly. Some other people like me, if I take a nap very late in the day, it will affect my ability to go to sleep that night and it will take me longer. If you haven't think about it, check yourself and maybe you don't want to take a nap if you're not like that. Or maybe you don't want to take a nap so close to bed because it will affect your sleep. So at least be conscious about it. Number 27, be active. This might not come as a surprise, but you need to be physically active and do sports and move every day. The more tired you are from doing sports, the easier will help, the easier will be for you to fall asleep. Number 28, temperature changes. This might be like a trick you can do. Some people experience that if they go to a sauna or they do a cold plunge or ice batting in the winter, it helps them to fall asleep better at night. At least for me, I feel I like to go in the winter and, and go swimming when it's cold outside to do ice bathing. And that night, I really feel I can sleep better. So maybe experience with that. Please be safe. Please don't do anything that will put your health in problems, please. But experiment with that, that it might help you to fall asleep better. And if you like saunas, just go for it. The next section is nutrition and supplementation. Let's first identify what nutrient deficiencies are linked to sleep problems. You might be suffering of a deficiency that could be fixed by taking a supplementation or by improving your nutrition, which could improve your sleep quality super fast. So really pay attention to what I'm gonna talk because this is a very important section and it's one of my favorites and I have put a lot of research to understand what are the common deficiencies that people suffer for different reasons. And you should not blame yourself for this, but rather it might be something that it could be genetic, it could be you have preconditions because of your lifestyle, what you eat, or maybe the combination of your food is preventing you to absorb certain minerals or nutrients better than other ones, and you might have a insufficiency. And this is very important because there's a difference between deficiency and insufficiency. Usually, if you go to a doctor, and you do a blood test, they will look for deficiency. Deficiencies of a mineral or a nutrient or whatever is something that might cause a clinical problem, sorry, disease. And doctor will check, okay, you have this amount of this mineral, this amount of this nutrient, and you're deficient in this vitamin. For the doctor, this is of concern because it might cause a disease, so they will tell you, okay, you're deficient in this. Now with the insufficiency, is that you may not be to the so low that you're deficient, but you might not have enough for yourself or for yours in general to have a good health quality or sleep quality. And this is where many doctors just don't see it, or many people in general just don't, don't actually see that deep into that, is that you might be insufficient of specific minerals and vitamins in your body, and that's why you're not sleeping to the best quality you can. So you can even increase even more, because you already crossed the threshold of not being deficient, so you have any, let's say, real clinical problems, but your sleep quality is not optimal. And this could be because you are insufficient of specific minerals. So pay attention to this section because it will be very important and it will open your mind to many options that you didn't think about. It. Even if you were very careful of doing blood tests and talking to your doctor often, this might be the reason that you have a sleeping problem because they don't know the difference between deficiency and insufficiency. I will now talk 
about what are the common nutrient deficiencies or insufficiencies that affect sleep problems. So I would recommend to get the general blood test and then find a good nutritionist or doctor that can help you with this. The first tip is number 29 is magnesium. A recent systematic review reported a positive effect of magnesium supplementation on sleep efficiency and sleep time. I think this is one that is very common now, that people take magnesium just before sleep and many people feel that they are getting better quality of sleep or they're sleeping better. While there are some studies that found weak associations, there are many other health benefits of increasing magnesium intake. The easiest way to increase your intake of magnesium is by eating a lot of green veggies. Just think about it. Everything that is green, usually in plants, is because they have chlorophyll molecules. And in the middle, in the center of these chlorophyll molecules, there is a magnesium molecule. And the more chlorophyll or the more green food you eat, the more magnesium you're consuming. Even fruits like dates are great in magnesium. Adult men need 400 to 420 milligrams of magnesium daily, while adult women is recommended between 300 and 320 milligrams of magnesium daily. At the same time, there are some very good and safe supplements that you can start taking today. Number 30, iron. I found myself, I had an iron insufficiency. I didn't have any directly clinical symptoms, but once I start supplementing with iron, I find out that it just improved my sleep quality just it was a day at night different and just by in supplementing with iron and that made me go a lot into the research of why iron affects sleep quality the reality that this was a game changer for me and i can really recommend to check if your iron levels are low there is a strong association with iron deficiency or insufficiency with restless leg syndrome and periodic limb movements in sleep. This involves repetitive leg and arm movements during sleep, either waking you up completely or partially affecting your sleep continuum and quality of sleep. This was the case for me because I would wake up in the middle of the night for no reason. I fell because I moved or something, that's why I wake up. And then I will have problems falling to sleep and my sleep quality will just be ruined. For that night. As I have told you, I have checked hundreds of videos of sleep in, in YouTube. I have so far none talking about the relationship with of iron and sleeping problems. And this is very important. You should definitely do a blood test, see if your iron levels are low, and start supplementing with iron. There are very safe ways where you can talk with your doctor about how to supplement with iron without causing you problems, so please consult the doctor and do it properly. The reality is that many studies report that iron supplementation does ameliorate the symptoms, and is what in my case, it works. So go to your doctor, get a blood test, and check for iron levels. There might be a chance that your levels are not low enough to be clinically relevant, but low enough to be insufficient, and really affecting your quality of life. If you have a severe deficiency, it might take higher doses. So this should be worked out with your doctor to build the iron level backs. There are some good protocols to supplement with iron. Usually it's very safe. If you do it properly with a doctor, so just go ahead and try it. Number 31, vitamin B12. A small study in Saudi Arabia found a weak association between higher serum vitamin B12 levels and a better sleep quality. Another small study in Greece showed association of low vitamin B12 and insomnia. So add it to your list of your blood tests and supplement accordingly. Number 32, vitamin D and calcium. A shiny study in a pre-diabetes patient show improved sleep quality after supplementation with vitamin D and calcium. 
Another study suggested that low serum calcium may disrupt sleep wake control and rest activity rhythm, even if they are within the normal range. Again, this debate of deficiency or insufficiency. As I say, go and get some sunlight. This will increase your vitamin D levels. And during the winter, supplement with vitamin D. Before you want to supplement with calcium, please talk to a nutritionist of how you can improve this by your diet. Supplementing with calcium is not something you should, not, you should do without the recommendation of a specialist, so it's better to improve your calcium level by first getting enough vitamin D and second, see if you can improve your diet accordingly. Number 33, kiwi. You were not thinking about this one to be on the list, but it is not only delicious, but there are actually some studies that showing that consuming kiwi improves your sleep quality. It might not be a strong effect or it might not be like it. you will fall asleep after eating kiwi, but there seems to be a connection and kiwi is a very good fruit. So maybe just include a few kiwis for your breakfast and who knows, it might help you. Number 34, eat earlier. Instead of skipping breakfast, maybe consider skipping dinner. The more hours you have between the last meal and sleep, the better your sleep quality. There is some minor research that shows that having a small window, a feeding window, earlier in the day is associated with better sleep quality. The last section is mental health. And this one is really important. And there are many factors and many things to consider to improve your mental health they will help you to improve your sleep quality. And there is something that many psychiatrists and psychologists and therapists will agree, is that almost every psychological problem usually has a component of bad sleep quality. So it's like the egg and the chicken, or the chicken and the egg. It's, it's not like the final treatment if someone is suffering from depression or some other psychological clinical problem. But if you have a bad sleep quality, it will make everything worse. And if you're suffering from a mental problem and you improve your sleep quality, you will see improvement in many other parts of your mental health. So this is really important. So let's see what we should focus now. Number 35, become a professional sleeper. And this I got from Brian Johnson. And I really love this mindset and this idea. You need to become a professional sleeper. And what that means is the same way you have a profession. Maybe you are a engineer. Maybe you are a business analyst and this is your profession. You need to include in your profession, in your life, that you are also a sleep professional. That means that you're going to learn, you're going to practice, and you're going to optimize, and you're going to be up to date in the best way to sleep properly. And this will be a priority in your life. Same way you go to work every day, say from 9 to 5 you know you have to go to work the same way you're going to say from 10 to 7 i will go to sleep and this is you have to put it as a you know part of your life and absorb this mindset and once you do it you know no matter what other people say this is my profession and this is part of me i will go to sleep earlier and i will do everything that is possible that i can have a good quality of sleep and because of that, your sleep schedule needs to be respected. And believe me, is that you can then help your family and friends to also become professional sleepers and be part of your guild to go to sleep early. Number 36, sleep territory. Our mind associates places with specific events. Your bed should only be for sex and sleep. If your mind associates your bed with other activities, it will be harder for sleep. For example, find a different place to watch movies or to do or to read a book, for example, because you wanna just use your bed for this specific activity. For sleep alone or for sleeping together. And this should only be for that. This is something also that many people can recall from this. Like if you go to a new place like a hotel, it could be super comfortable. But you, it might not be easier the first night to fall asleep because it's a foreign place. So your mind associates your bedroom for sleep. Don't use it for anything else and try to hold all your other activities outside of your room. So when you go to 
So you, when you want to go to sleep and you get in your bed, your body knows there's only one thing you should do and it is to sleep. Number 37, have a wean down routine. 30 to 45 minutes before you go to sleep, try to disconnect from everything. Maybe try some meditation, some yoga, try just to quit everything, relax, and be in the mood. You know you're gonna go to sleep in the next minutes. Number 38, sleep anxiety. The feeling of stress or fear about going to sleep. Many people suffer from this. You didn't sleep well the last days and you're afraid you won't be able to sleep well that night. Just know that sleeping a little bit is better than not sleeping. And if you are in bed, close your eyes and you say, okay, I know I didn't sleep well the day before, now I'm trying. And if I don't sleep well again today, if I sleep a little bit better than the day before, it's better than anything. And once you adopt that mindset, you will reduce your sleep anxiety because a little bit of sleep is better than no sleep. And if you try, believe me, your body will appreciate that. Number 39, meditate. It is extremely cliche these days, but it works. Even if you do five to 10 minutes early in the morning, many people also report that it just helped them calm down a little bit. Their mind is clear and they can sleep easier and better. Number 40, yoga nidra. As part of your winter retreat, try to practice yoga nidra. This is something, there's many videos online, find the one that works for you and just give it a try. Number 41, get a sleep tracker. Get a smartwatch, get one of these rings, maybe from Aura. I think Samsung also have one, Apple, there's a lot of them. And get the one that is according to your budget. And it might give you some anxiety because sometimes you won't be able to sleep properly, but it can also tell you how much you sleep. They're not super accurate. They, let's, put this, let's put this on the table. They are not super accurate in terms of how deep your sleep is, but they tell you more or less how much time of sleep you had. And this is a good thing because then you know, okay, today I slept eight hours and the day before I slept nine hours and I felt way more refreshed the day before, maybe I should increase for nine hours my amount of sleep. So you can track that and you can get a sense of wind. And as I said in one of the tips before that we need to take in consideration the time we, it takes us to fall asleep, at least for, with my smartwatch, this is usually very accurate for that. And if I calculate, for example, eight hours to go to sleep, and then it took me 40 minutes, the next day I can see properly, oh, you slept seven hours and 20 minutes because of that time it took me to go to fall to sleep. So that's why it's very important to add this extra 30 to 40 minutes to the amount of time you want to sleep that should be at least eight hours per night or even more. And you will see that it, you will see some improvement in your sleep. Now there's this, the next ones are some tips you can do to fall asleep once you are on bed. Number 42 is to yawn. Yawning is a sign that you are sleepy and it's actually contagious. So when you yawn, other people also do it. And what some people don't know, and this I got from Matthew Walker, is that if you yawn on purpose, on purpose, it will sign your body that you're sleepy and it will help you to fall asleep faster. I actually do that myself when I go to bed and I'm still prone to fall asleep. I just uh, yawn. It helped me to fall asleep. So yeah, this is what's a good tip from Matthew Walker. You should try tonight. Number 43, dream awake. It's okay, this is my idea. I never heard that before, but this is something I, I realized that works for me. Is that if you think about most of our dreams are kind of crazy. Some are good, some are bad, some we want to be in the dream. But that kind of like make no sense. If you really think about what happened in dreams, it's just nonsense things. This I think that we can also like sign our body we want to sleep if we put our mind in this open imagination world of nonsense. So when I'm closing my eyes, I'm in, in the, on bed, and I want to go to sleep, I start imagining the crazy stuff, the most crazy stuff that make no sense, but maybe I'm a superhero and I have fun and things make no sense and there's no physical loss and what I'm imagining. 
and I just kept going to this world of my world that I created in my mind and then I can fall asleep. I just kind of like for just go in between. I kind of just transition to, to sleep after that. And this is something for me, this is also like a cognitive therapy for me to relax because I enter my own self dreams that I'm creating myself. So I'm dreaming, let's say awake, and then I can just transition to dreaming while sleeping. Number 44, breathe. There are different sleep protocols. Like in deep breath, it helps you to fall asleep. There's one thing that I heard from Andrew Hooperman, and I think it helps a lot to relax, is to do these fast sleeps, uh, fast breaths. It's like you do like, you do like two breaths. So you, you breathe very deeply, and then you do like a second fast um, breathing, and this helps you relax. Let's try it again. Now I feel relaxed. Try it at home as well. Number 45, stop watching your clock. Many people have a clock to check the time they're going to bed and ed end up counting how many hours they will actually sleep if they go to bed a certain hour. Well, it's very important you calculate properly how many hours you're gonna sleep. Don't get me wrong. But you, once you go to bed, you should not see a clock anymore again until you are awake the next day. Because, of course, sometimes it will take longer to fall asleep. And then you see the time and then you're counting and shit. And then I was like, ah, oh, I've been in bed for an hour and I've been able to fall asleep now. I'm just gonna sleep six hours. Oh, life is terrible, blah, 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 blah. No, just go to bed, put your clock away and just relax. If you keep checking your clock and your watch, just make it worse. Just do it beforehand and then once you're in your room, it's just a clear sound. Is this one for you to relax? You and your partner or your family or wherever you sleep with. It's just for you guys or you girls, whatever you want. Number 46, and this is the last one. Have fun. Sleep should be fun. You know, you should be looking forward to go to sleep, especially for dreams. I mean, I don't know why, but if I go with the positive mood, I dream in very cool things. And let's recall this for everyone. Let's say you meet someone and you meet someone you like. And then you see this person maybe a few times. For many people, you may see this person in a dream because it has so much a positive impact because you like that person. You go to sleep and then you see this person and you're dreaming in that person, literally. And it might sound a little bit creepy if you tell to that person, but at the same time, it's part of our brain creating these fantasies. And we look forward to that moment. Like you, you, of creating these fantasies in your brain of things that make you happy. And this is one of the good things about sleep. And if you focus on your sleep quality and putting enough time of deep sleep, which is when you are REM sleep, which is when you dream, um, you will have these good dreams. I mean, you go with your mind, with a good conscience. You do well in the day. You did the best. You act the best to your best morals and you put your effort in life and trying to be better for you and the rest of the people. You go with a clean conscience. Then you go to sleep and you also put a lot of effort to have a long and good quality of sleep. You start dreaming. Most of the times you will dream nice things that it will make you look forward to go to sleep. It will be fun. It will be oh, what I'm going to go to sleep and what is going to happen. Sometimes you have crazy ideas, and it's true. You have crazy ideas of how to improve your life or, or things you can do for your job, for your business, or with your partner, or with your family, or friends that happen during sleep. And something you can try is get a notebook, write your dreams when you wake up, and you will see that it's a lot of fun. And you'll be looking forward to go to sleep. Yes. And the more and the better quality of sleep you have, the better your life will be in general. Your health, you have lower stress, you will look better, 
people who want to sleep with you more, you will just be happier. So please put the effort and put as a top priority to become a sleeper. Become a professional sleeper. And thank you very much for listening today. I know it was a very long video. Um, I hope you were here to listen to all the tips and I hope they can help you. I put this effort to do this full guide of how to optimize your sleep because I know many of us are suffering. So I tried to do a compendium of all these tips together. And if you like it, or if you have any suggestions, any comments, please write the comments below. Please let me know if there was something new you learned, if there's something you apply, any other recommendations, something I miss, or maybe you didn't like anything, also tell me why. I always like to hear your, read your comments and suggestions. So I hope all of you a very good night's sleep and we see you again. Thank you very much and